We're going to find out the most important way that God has chosen to relate to us on today's episode of the Good News Program. The program you are about to watch is part of a free series we are making available to you as a gift from Greg Fritz Ministries entitled Stormproofing Your Life. Visit gregfritz.org to download the MP3s and watch the streaming video for free by entering code FREE at checkout. Are you tired of hearing bad news? Tune into the good news of the gospel. Welcome to Good News with Greg Fritz. Hello, I'm Greg Fritz. Welcome to the Good News program. We're teaching a series called Stormproofing Your Life. We are preparing for anything and everything that life would throw our way. We can build on the rock and be like the wise man. When the storm came and the wind blew and the, and the, the rain descended, the wise man's house remained firm and steadfast in the midst of the storm. God wants us to be storm-proofed. He wants our lives to be durable. He wants us to be ready to live life and, and be fruitful and fulfill His will in every season, even in storm season. So if you've been a little unsettled with the way current events are going and world politics are going, the economy of the world is going, the health trends in the world, you need to listen to this teaching. It will help you and it will prepare you to live life in these perilous times. I have a package for you and it's for our television audience. It's all these teachings on stormproofing your life, all 15 or 20, we're not sure how many yet. All of these in audio and video so you can listen to the program or you can watch. And then we've also included this audio series, God Likes Faith, as a bonus uh, offer. It's included along with the study notes to Stormproofing Your Life on this thumb drive. We've put all this information on here. You can contact our helpline and we'll show, share with you how to get yours. We'll even help you as you uh, try to cause it to work in your device. But the, the, the great thing is you can take that and you plug it into your car and the audio version of the series will come up and you can listen to them one after the other. You can plug it into your computer. You'll see audio. You'll see video. You can download it, put it on a device. And if that's too complicated, you can literally plug this into your television and play the video version on your TV. Uh, episodes one through uh, through the rest of the series, Stormproofing Your Life. This is a great tool. It's, it's one of the miracles of modern technology, but it's a way to take the Word of God and make it accessible. Uh, I just thought it was fantastic. I took it out to my car and plugged it in, and boom, the audio version came up on my playlist. I was able to start it, and I don't sit around listening to my own program, but I did do it as a test, and I played the first one. I turned my car off, went and did something, got back in my car, it starts playing exactly where it left off, and it'll play right through the entire series. It's just, you know, it's about as simple as we could make it. We want to get the Word of God into your hands. We make these programs, and we want you to listen to them, watch them. We put them up on YouTube. We make podcasts out of them. We put them on Vimeo. We want people to get these messages. So contact our helpline and we'll do our best to get you set up where you can have an endless flow of material coming into your life, into your devices, into your car that will keep you fed and built up on the Word of God. We need it now more than ever. Uh, we need to be built up by the Word of God, which will never, never let us down. We're talking about really step, the step one in building a firm, solid foundation, a storm-proof foundation. Step one is to accept the absolute integrity of God's Word. You know, we've, uh, I quoted Hebrews 11.6, I'll quote it again. He who comes to God must believe that He is, and that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. That just simply means that if you're going to come to God and relate to God, you're going to have to believe there is a God. Now, that's pretty simple, but it takes a step of faith to do that. And those of us who have done it have not been disappointed because we realized in doing that that there really is a God, and He began a relationship with us. But on the heels of that, you've got to do pretty much the same thing with God's Word. God has chosen to relate to us through His Word primarily, not feelings, and not visions and dreams, but primarily God wants to relate to us 
uh, teach us, talk to us, reveal Himself to us through His Word. This is what God chose. Now, He could have chosen another method. He could have um, said, you know what, I'm going to appear to one person and that person's going to tell you what I said. And he kind of did that with Moses, but even Moses wrote out the law and then people would refer to the writings. Uh, so God's always worked like this as far as revealing himself to people in words, in books, in scripture, in holy scripture. So what we have to do as Christians is not only believe there's a God, but we have to also believe that the Bible is God's Word. It's not the Word of a man. It's not just a good book. It's not just another book. It's not just a famous book, but it is the Word of God. We have to believe that God was big enough and He's powerful enough to write a book and preserve that book in its, in its original form and then pass it down from generation to generation, from nation to nation. The reason God chose His Word, I mean, I don't pretend to know all of God's decision-making process, but one of the main reasons He chose to reveal Himself in His Word is because it's a, it's a more sure way to do it. It's more sure than feelings. It's more sure than emotions. It's more sure than a vision or a dream. It's more sure than taking somebody else's word for it. God put His will into His Word, and then He presents us His Word. It's a document. It's a holy document. It's a legal document. It's an eternal document. It's a binding document. It's like, even Paul said, it's like a testament, like a, a, a will. It's like a last will and testament. And he says what's different about this one is that <clears throat> when the testator died, uh, not only is the will in effect, but he's back here by his spirit to enforce it. <laughs> You've never had that happen. If you had a rich relative and they died and left you in their will, they don't come back to make sure you get what you're supposed to get. It's up to the lawyers and the courts and the relatives and all that. But God's will is even way beyond that where it's written in his book. Jesus was the testator. He died and now he's back by his spirit to enforce his will in your life. It is absolutely the most sure guaranteed way to communicate something, to, to uh, reveal something, and, and have it unchanged over generations. You know, have you ever, you ever been in one of those games where, where they, you whisper something to one person, and then they whisper it to the next, and then they whisper it to the next, and it goes all the way around the circle, and by the time it gets back to you, it doesn't even resemble what you initially said. And God didn't want that to happen. That would have happened. You know, there would have been folklore and religious ideas and imaginations and, and, and culture would have gotten involved and it would have changed whatever the original message was until it would be undiscernible. So God said, I'm just going to write this down and I'm going to let it stay the way I wrote it forever and I'm going to pass that along so that you don't have to get it second, third, fourth, fifth hand. This makes so much sense. But we are people of emotion. We're people of passion. We, we, we're people that like to see things and feel things and hear things. We're very sense-oriented. We, we like that. And, and, and it's tempting to want God to reveal himself in one of these other ways. And I just want to make this point in this uh, session, and that I think it's very important to make it. God could have revealed himself in a different way, but he chose not to. <clears throat> Why should God use a less true method, a less accurate method of revealing himself to the world when he has the best method at all, of, of all through his word? It's a holy legal document that does not change. And I quoted Smith Wigglesworth in the last show, and I'm going to quote it again. Smith Wigglesworth said, I don't get to know God through my emotions. I don't get to know God through my feelings. I get to know God through His Word. That's where the accurate revelation is. And you can, you know, you, you think about your own life. One day, if you were going by feelings, you'd think that you'd feel like God just didn't like you at all. I mean, God must hate me because I just don't feel the love. It just feels like God hates me. I just feel like God is, the heavens are brass. He's turned his back on me. 
and then two or three days later, you can have an experience in prayer, and it's like, oh my, the love of God is everywhere. I feel it. I have goosebumps. I have tears coming down my cheeks. I'm a, God must love me today. And if it wasn't for His Word, <clears throat> we wouldn't know the difference. You wouldn't know whether God loved you today or hated you today, but we have His Word on it. God always loves us. He never leaves us. He never forsakes us. We've got promise after promise after promise that talk about how God loves us, how God's faithful to us, how God's not going to fail us, how God's forgiven us, how God's blessed us. These things come from His Word, not from feelings. We can re refer to the Word and let the Word triumph or trump our feelings let the Word trump our thoughts. Let the Word trump the words of others. We allow the Word of God to be the single greatest authority in our lives. This is how you build on the rock. This is how you hear the sayings of Jesus and you do them. You become completely convinced that God's Word is true, that it's God's revelation to me. As I said, God could have revealed Himself in a different way, but He chose not to. We would like to see God. I'd love to have God just come down and introduce Himself in person and uh, take me to the altar with, you know, hand in hand, and He could kneel with me and we could pray. But you know, it doesn't work that way. It works by the Word. You're not going to see the, uh, uh, an, uh, an appearance of God's form in, in bodily form, but what you are going to hear is the gospel. What is that? The Word. You're going to hear that God loves you. You're going to hear that Jesus died for you. You're going to hear that if you confess Him as Lord, then He'll save you and forgive you and come into your life. Those are words, and we relate to God through His Word. Now, the feelings come. I'm not saying we never have feelings. I'm just saying they're not... The, the primary way uh, that, we, that we relate to God. They're not the highest authority when it comes to God and His Word and, or in His will and His, His person. We get that from His Word. Now, feelings do come. They come and they go. But the Word doesn't change. The Word is a constant. You know, it's, it's, the, it's the point of contact. You say, you want to touch God? You want to see God? You want to, you want to experience God? You go to His Word. You say, well, no, I mean, I really want to, I want to see God. I want, to, I want to touch God. Okay, you go to His Word. That's where He reveals Himself. You can see Him. You know what He's thinking. You know what He wants to do. You know what He doesn't want to do. It's all in His Word, and it's a better way because it's unchangeable. Can you see that? Nobody can get in there and manipulate that and change that. Feelings don't have anything to do with it. You know, we do this all the time with natural documents. I don't know why we have a hard time doing it with a spiritual document, but <clears throat> let, let's just say, you know, uh, you, I, I use this illustration. I have experience in this area, but if you get a traffic ticket, you know, if you're speeding and a policeman pulls you over and writes you a ticket, he takes your license and, and, and he writes all that out, hands you a ticket. Did you know it doesn't matter if you feel like you have a ticket or not? You don't go, you know, I just don't feel like I have this ticket. It doesn't make any difference. You have a ticket. It's a legal document. Your name's on it. You signed it. You had to sign it or they'd take you to jail. You know, I, I, to me, that's kind of a, it's kind of a dirty trick. They say, you want to sign this and admit guilt or would you like to go to jail? I think I'll sign. Thanks. And then you signed your life away. So whatever. Um, that's a different sermon and a different series. Um, but, but it's a legal document and it's not based on feeling whatsoever. In fact, you, you can say, I wasn't speeding. doesn't matter. You still have a ticket. And you can say, I didn't run that red light. It was yellow, kind of an orangish color at the point when I ran. And it doesn't matter. You got the ticket. So, so we, we realize, now you can fight that. I understand that. But, but you have a ticket. Your name's on it. It's a legal document. And we know better than to try to judge that by feelings or emotion. It's, it's really goes beyond that. <laughs> you know, if you, you may not feel like an American citizen. Sometimes I don't feel very American. I feel, you know, I feel a little Swiss or you might feel a little, a little German. I feel a little English. You know, I got German English background. Now, you talk about trying to bring the world together. My, my ancestors were German and English, and now I'm an American. We're, we're doing our best to, to, to meet in the middle and have peace. But, but it doesn't matter how German I feel or how English I feel. I have an American passport. You know what that means? I'm American. It's documented. It's legal. 
and it'll hold up under any court of law. In fact, it'll hold up on any border in any country in the world. I can show them my American passport and they know one thing. They may not like me, they may, may not agree with me, they may want to harass me, but they know I'm American. Why? Because that's what that says. We do this all the time with legal documents that are less valuable, they're less solid, less dependable than the Word of God. And then when we get to the Word, we want to balk at it. We want to feel something. We want to see something. Listen, you've got the legal document in your hand. God's going to do what He said He would do. God is who He said He was. You are who He said you were, and it's all written in black and white. Read it, and then act like it's true. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know when, you, when you go down the aisle and you stand there with your, with your fiancé, and you uh, have the... Um, marriage ceremony and it's time to say you know put up or shut up it's i do not i might you can't you can't get away with that you can't pass on that one it's uh, you know do you take this woman to be your lawfully i do and when you do that when you say that they write they've got it on paper it's a marriage license and it's signed by the proper authorities and it's legal and you can walk away from there and say, you know, I mean, that was a really weak I do. It was, it was really short, and I don't really feel like it worked. Well, you have a document to prove that it did. In fact, you don't even have to feel married to be married. You just need a, a, a marriage certificate that proves that you were married. And it's recorded in the courts, and it's so. It doesn't have anything to do with feelings, in fact. <laughs> I, you ever heard of cold feet? Man, if people went by feelings, there'd be a lot of people never make it down to the altar because they'd bail before it ever happened. They don't feel like they want to go through with it. And they may not feel like this is for them. But if you say, I do, and you sign that document, you are married. That has more weight than your feelings or your fickle ideas and, and, and the, you know, your history or whatever you want to bring into the mix, um, a legal document settles the argument. There is no argument. Now, you may not want to be married, but you are married. You, you may not be glad that you got married, but you're married. And, and the same is true with God's Word. Why would God choose a lesser way to reveal Himself to us based on sight or sound or emotion or the Word of someone else when he can do the absolute surest and best way by writing a book and putting into words exactly what he wanted to put into words. Then there's no argument. There's no debate. There's no wondering what did he mean. He said what he meant. He meant what he said. And, and then as you take this, this leap of faith, and, and the leap is this, I believe that there is a God. That's the first leap. The second leap is, I believe the Bible is His Word, and it's true. It's not partly true. It's not been changed, and now it's outdated and out of date and irrelevant. It is the eternal truth. It does not change. It's alive. There is no prophecy of Scripture that is any private interpretation. Let me read this again from 1 Peter. Uh, 1 Peter 1.19, this is the King James Version. We also have a more sure word of prophecy, whereunto you do well to take heed as a light that shines in a dark place until the day dawn and the day star rises in your heart. He's saying the word of God is a more sure word of prophecy than the word of a prophet, than hearing a voice from heaven, than having an angel come and bring you a message. And, you know, all these things have happened, but they all are secondary to the Word of God. God's Word must take the primary place of authority in our lives. We must relate every vision, every dream, every encounter we have with a supernatural being. It all has to be in line with the Word of God. And again, I'm going to say it again. Why would God want to, to, to not use this best form of communication and trade it in for a lesser form. You might be more thrilled about it if God were to make you feel something or see something, but that's not a sure word of prophecy. That's not as sure as the Word of God itself. What happens is once we begin to put the Word of God in its proper place in our thinking, we, we become free 
we're, we're liberated from sights and sounds and feelings and emotions. And that's a great day, folks. That is a great day. That's the day you get off the roller coaster. That's the day you stop letting the world tell you how you're supposed to feel. That's the day when your feelings don't dictate your emotions and, and, uh, and your, your, your sense of well-being. That's the day when the Word of God, when, when the Word of God becomes the ultimate authority in your life, you're set free, completely free. And you live your life more like God, who there is no, uh, no variableness nor shadow of turning with God. And when you align with His Word, you won't change either. You'll be steadfast, solid, immovable. You won't be subject to the news of the day and the emotions that are going on in public. This is the, the way to build your life on the rock. And the rock is God's Word. I don't know if you got anything out of it. I tell you, I love this. I love the fact that God chose the best way and decided to use that. And, and I, know, I understand there are times when you just want to feel God, and a lot of us Pentecostal charismatics, you know, we have experiences with God that we feel God, we feel the anointing, we feel the Spirit, and we love that. But we got to be careful not to exalt that above the Word. Because sometimes the feelings are there and sometimes they're not. The Word of God's always true. There is no doubt about it. God's Word is true day in and day out, just as real. It's more real than a marriage certificate. It's more real than a traffic ticket. It's more real than any document on earth. It is the, 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 the promise of God, the Word of God, the testament, the last will and testament of God Himself. And God watches over that word to perform it. And Jesus is here to enforce it. I'm telling you, this is the best way to take God at His word. I dare you to try some scriptures. I dare you to pull some words out of God's word and, and, and say, I'm going to live by this. I'm going to stand on this. God's going to supply my need. God's going to give me strength. God's going to give me wisdom in this area. God's going to give me direction. Think about this. James said, if any man lack wisdom, let him ask of God. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For the man who wavers is like a wave of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. Let not that man suppose he'll receive anything. But what he's saying is, if you lack wisdom, ask of God, who gives to all men liberally and upbraideth not. What that means is, you can have all the wisdom you need. Just ask God. Stand on that verse. Say, God, I need wisdom. And you said, ask for wisdom and I would have. Practice that word. Put that word in your life. Embrace it. Confess it. Pray it. Act like it's so. Quit saying, I don't have wisdom. Say, I have wisdom. I ask God for wisdom, and He's given me wisdom. I have a, an endless flow of wisdom from heaven. I know what to do and how to do it because God shows me. I ask Him. You begin to put these words, these promises. It's not just a book to read and to enjoy. It's a, it's a book to act on. We hear the sayings of Jesus, and we do them, and life changes. It is a legal document. My, my, my. I'll tell you, you know, I've said this before, but people believe in all kinds of things um, and, and, and not necessarily, they don't necessarily change their life or make their life better. But when you choose to believe the Bible, I'll tell you, when you choose to believe the promises of God, your life gets better and better and better and you can see the difference. Mountains move, giants are killed, storms cease, m needs are met. Life changes as you choose to believe the Bible. Why would you want to waste your time believing anything else? The Bible is the document in this world that will change your life forever. And it's right there in front of everybody. Everybody can have a Bible. Take God at His word and get with the program. Amen. Well, I, I have so much to say. You know, I've been studying and I've got so many new series to teach. I've got one called Dare to Believe that I can't wait to get to. I've got another one called You Have the Spirit of Faith. I got another one called Eternal Life versus Living Forever. Did you know that, 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 that everybody lives forever, but not everybody has eternal life? And I did a whole study on that. I just completed a study called, um, called Celebrate Diversity. I want to get these programs recorded as quick as possible. I have plans for my next 100 good news programs, and I need $35,000 to do that. I can't believe I'm even saying that, you know. I grew up doing children's church, and it only costs you 50 cents to get there and do a sermon, and now 
It's very expensive to do these messages and put them out on the Good News program. But uh, I, I'll tell you, there is a calling to do this. There is a flow of truth that, that I can't shut off. I don't want to. Like, like the prophet said, it's like fire shut up in my bones. I'm asking you to pray. Spend some time and ask God if he would have you help us. You know, I know my father owns the cattle on a thousand hills and the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And he has supplied our needs up to now. We've done over 400 episodes. And I know that God is back, backing this endeavor, but he doesn't rain down money from heaven. <laughs> that would be counterfeit money if he did that. He uses people. He speaks to people and they respond and they give. The money actually comes through people. And so if God's wanting to use you, if he's giving you that unction uh, to support this project, I'm going to call it my next 100. It's my next 100 episodes. We're raising $35,000. In fact, I've already mentioned this to the last church I was in, and they gave generously to help us do this, uh, to help us make these programs. And really, you're a direct beneficiary because I'm going to record this stuff and get it to you as soon as I can, and I believe it's going to bless you. I believe these teachings are, are, are fine-tuned for today, for the days we're living in. And uh, I'm willing to be a vessel. I'm willing to, to study and prepare and, and bring these to you. But we need people to step up everywhere. Um, our partners have done an amazing job. There are others that may want to give a one-time gift. But call our helpline. Say, hey, I'd like to help on the next 100 project. Go to our website to the donate uh, button and you can give that way. We want to make it easy for you wherever you are, however you prefer to do it. Uh, if you'd like to become a partner, you can call our helpline and we'll automatically charge your credit card every month until, of course, until you tell us to stop. And that way you don't have to do anything. So uh, we've got methods in place to help you if you want to give to support this ministry. And I know there are many, many people out there that have already given. And I'd just like to say thank you. We're doing it. We are doing this. We're not talking about it or thinking about it. We're doing it. And uh, there's much, much more to come. Thank you for being with me today. Thanks for listening. We're going to continue this teaching. I got a lot more on our next episode. Until then, remember, the good news is so good, the bad news doesn't matter. In this series, you'll learn how to be prepared to handle anything and everything that could come against you. If you're enjoying this teaching on living a stormproof life, I want to encourage you to get the entire series. You can have all of this in audio and or video on our new thumb drive that we're making available. If you'll just call our helpline, we've put our study notes on here. We've also put my new series, God Likes Faith, in here. It's a four message series. That's all included in this one thumb drive. It's a miracle. You can watch it, you can listen to it, you can print the study notes out, and it's yours to keep. Call our helpline for a gift of $30 or more. We'll send yours out right away. To order your copy of this series, call our helpline at 918-749-7744 Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. Central Time 